Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And hello, Merry Christmas. Uh, today is December 25th, Saturday morning, and we are celebrating, continuing to celebrate the nativity, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Last night, we had our, uh, our children's pageant service and we had our big choral service. Uh, this morning, we continue the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ uh, with what is known as a low mass, with carols. A uh, low mass just means that we do not have an organ accompaniment or we don't sing any particular parts of the mass like we sing uh, the main service at 10 o'clock on Sunday or last night at nine o'clock, but instead it is a said service. But being Christmas day, we're going to sing some carols at the beginning and in the middle and at the end as well because, well, quite frankly, Christmas carols are wonderful. Uh, it is Christmas, and rather than looking at one of the lessons, I thought we'd talk a little bit about, uh, from the daily office, we talk a little bit about the lesson that is actually assigned for the uh, particular gospel reading for this Mass today. Uh, why is that? Well, it, we're used to the stories of the birth of Jesus Christ with the angels and the shepherds and all the stuff that we, we did last night uh, at our main service. Today's gospel lesson, which is actually the primary lesson assigned for Christmas, actually doesn't contain any of those characters. No angels, no shepherds. Uh, as a matter of fact, it doesn't even make a mention of Mary and Joseph. The lesson that's assigned is known as the prologue of St. John's Gospel. In other words, it's the opening verses of St. John's Gospel. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God the same, was in the beginning with God. St. John does not record for us in a gospel narrative of the birth of Jesus Christ and his childhood, uh, but instead, uh, John begins his gospel with a theological explanation of why that nativity happened. What is going on? Why in the world did the second person of the Holy Trinity become a human, birth, human person born in Bethlehem that dwelt among us, ministered among us, preached among us, and ultimately died on the cross and rose again. Why did that happen? Well, John, rather than giving an infancy narrative, and I'm assuming that at that point, uh, because John is writing his gospel later than the other gospels, those are beginning to circulate, he knows the story's been preserved by St. Luke. Uh, Matthew gives us also an account of the birth. Mark just jumps right into public ministry. Uh, Mark is not one with a lot of details. Uh, so John decides rather to begin his gospel with a theological reflection on why it is that Jesus Christ was born. I don't want to give you my whole sermon, so, uh, but if you want to come again. Now, it, and here's the, the catch. If you've already been to Mass today, or last night, uh, you are welcome to join us as well today because it is a different set of readings, so it does have a completely different flavor. Uh, and we do have some parishioners who do like to go to the Christmas Eve and Christmas Day service as well because of the difference in readings. Um, so that's enough for today. It's a short morning meditation because quite frankly, the whole feast itself is one glorious meditation for us to celebrate. Uh, and so I do hope that if you are able to make it, please join us at 11 o'clock. Otherwise, we will live stream the service as well on Christmas Day. Uh, but I also want to uh, let you know that we are having church tomorrow because tomorrow's Sunday and we worship on Sunday. Uh, and so we will have our regular uh, service schedule on Sunday morning, 7.30 morning prayer, 8 o'clock Holy Communion, 10 o'clock Holy Communion, uh, and then we will have 5.30 evening prayer with the opportunity to receive communion. So uh, plenty of time to worship and to glorify God, and I do hope that you will join us in that fantastic act of worship and to receive the Blessed Sacrament. And may God bless you with a very Merry Christmas.